Now let me discuss some of the important MCQs here. Now the question that can be asked is the most potent loop diuretic is the options are furosemide, bumetanide, torsemide and ethacrylic acid. Alright. So as just now we have discussed which is the most potent loop diuretic among all this? It is your bumetanide. So bumetanide is the most potent loop diuretic compared to all other loop diuretics. And the other important point about bumetanide is bumetanide is not only potent, it is also having lesser adverse effects compared to that of your furosemide. Whereas you take torsemide, torsemide is the longest acting loop diuretic, right? So this is about this particular MCQ. Now let me discuss the uses of the loop diuretics. Right? Let me discuss the uses of the loop diuretics. Remember the very important use of these loop diuretics is to remove the edema fluid. Right? The main use of this loop diuretics is to remove the edema fluid. Alright? So to remove the edema fluid. Right? So to remove the edema fluid like edema fluid due to what due to renal impairment there can be edema because the GFR will be reduced and the fluid gets accumulated in our body and we can give this loop diuretics which will wash out this particular excess fluid which is being accumulated in the body next in case of cirrhosis of liver we give this loop diuretics but remember in cirrhosis of liver like what did we discuss Along with loop diuretics to reduce the edema fluid, we also should give the aldosterone antagonist. Right? So what we have discussed there, aldosterone antagonist, they will be very much effective in those clinical conditions where the aldosterone levels are very high. One of the clinical conditions where the aldosterone levels are very high is your cirrhosis of liver. So along with the loop diuretic, we will combine with the aldosterone antagonist. And the other condition of where we use this loop diuretics is the edema because of the cardiac diseases. Right? Edema because of the cardiac diseases. Right? In patients with a congestive heart failure, these individuals, they can have edema. So in that clinical condition also, we can give this particular loop diuretics to remove the edema fluid. Next. The other important use, remember here, the these drugs can be given intravenously or they can be given orally as well but remember what is the advantage of giving these drugs intravenously is these individuals with acute pulmonary edema they will have a prompt relief of difficulty in breathing right so whenever you give these drugs intravenously in patients with acute pulmonary edema Right? In patients with acute pulmonary edema, there will be a prompt relief of this particular symptoms. And why is that particular prompt relief of the symptoms? Mainly due to vasodilatory action. Right? Mainly due to vasodilatory action. Now, the other important use is, remember, related to your calcium. Now, what did we discuss like when we were discussing the mechanism of action of this particular loop diuretics in a normal individual at the level of ascending limb of loop of Henle, there is a positivity which is being created by your potassium ion. So that is the reason why in a normal individual, the calcium and magnesium, they cannot cross the ascending limb of loop of Henle. When you give this loop diuretics, the positivity created by the potassium ion at the ascending limb of loop of Henle is reduced. So when the positivity at the level of ascending limb of loop of Henle is reduced, this divalent cations, this calcium and magnesium easily can cross through the thick ascending limb of loop of Henle and they are washed out. And they are washed out. So remember, the other use of the loop diuretics is in those clinical conditions, wherever there is hypercalcemia, 
all right in those clinical condition wherever there is hypercalcemia if you give this loop diuretics it will wash out the calcium and thereby hypercalcemia can be treated in the individual all right so these drugs they cause excretion of calcium and that is the reason why it is used in the treatment of hypercalcemia now remember exactly a contrary point you take thiazide diuretics thiazide diuretics will retain the calcium whereas the loop diuretics will lose the calcium all right so thiazide diuretics were using were being used in idiopathic hypercalciuria whereas the loop diuretics they are used in hypercalcemia why because the loop diuretics will wash out the calcium so these are the important uses of the loop diuretics number 1 removal of the edema fluid due to either renal pathology or liver pathology or the cardiac pathology whenever you give this loop diuretics intravenously it is very much used in the patients with acute pulmonary edema to cause the relief of that particular symptoms and that is mainly due to vasodilatory action and it is also used in the treatment of hypercalcemia now let me discuss the adverse effects of the loop diuretics the first and foremost important adverse effect is the electrolyte disturbance right so these individuals they will have hypokalemia now why is this particular hypokalemia present because the sodium whichever is not being reabsorbed at the level of thick ascending limb of loop of henle it will reach the distal tubules and at the level of the distal tubule the sodium it gets exchanged with the potassium and the potassium it starts getting excreted out in the urine and that is the reason why these individuals will have hypokalemia next they will have what is called hypomagnesemia now why do you think they will have hypomagnesemia is remember we have discussed at the mechanism of action of this loop diuretics this loop diuretics will reduce the positivity at the level of the thick ascending limb of loop of henle so once they reduce the positivity at the level of the thick ascending limb of loop of henle this calcium and as well as magnesium it will start slowly passing through the thick ascending limb of loop of henle and it will enter into the distal tubules and they get excreted in the urine all right and that is the reason why it is responsible for hypomagnesemia not only hypomagnesemia these loop diuretics will also cause the loss of calcium so due to which they will also cause hypocalcemia next if you take the other adverse effects these drugs will cause hyponatremia now why do you think there is hyponatremia because you take the thick ascending limb of loop of henle it will contribute to nearly around 25% of the sodium reabsorption now what is your loop diuretics doing your loop diuretics is inhibiting that particular sodium reabsorption at the level of the thick ascending limb of loop of henle so that inhibited sodium reabsorption will pass through the renal tubules and minimal amount of the sodium will be exchanged at the level of the distal tubules that is only 2% the remaining part of the sodium it gets excreted in the urine and that will result in what is called hyponatremia next the other important adverse effect is alkalosis right the other important adverse effect is alkalosis now why do you think there is alkalosis why because the sodium which is not being reabsorbed at the level of the thick ascending limb of loop of henle it is getting exchanged with the h plus ion at the level of the distal tubules so the sodium will be reabsorbed at the level of the distal tubules or at the level of the collecting duct in exchange with the h plus ion at the level of the intercalated cells and these h plus ions they get excreted in the urine and thereby the individual will have what is called alkalosis all right next now the other important point you see here these loop diuretics they are contraindicated in diabetes mellitus patients why because these loop diuretics they will cause hyperglycemia right why because these loop diuretics will cause hyperglycemia due to which they are contraindicated in diabetes mellitus patients next the other important adverse effect is 
these loop diuretics they will also cause hyperuricemia that is they will increase the uric acid levels now why do you think they will increase the uric acid levels or before that remember a point which is the clinical condition where the uric acid levels are very high in patients with the gouty arthritis so in patients with gout these loop diuretics they are contraindicated so they are contraindicated in diabetes mellitus they are also contraindicated in gouty arthritis right they are also contraindicated in gouty arthritis now now let me explain you why these drugs will cause hyperuricemia now you see here now this is the nephron now where does the loop diuretics enter into the tubules loop diuretics they will enter into the tubule via secretion at the level of the proximal convoluted tubule right loop diuretics they get secreted at the level of the proximal convoluted tubule uric acid also enters into the tubule through a transporter system which is present at the level of the proximal convoluted tubule that is uric acid is secreted into the proximal convoluted tubule through a transporter system now this loop diuretics they will compete with the same transporter system through which the uric acid is getting secreted so that is the reason why whenever you give loop diuretics the uric acid will not be secreted into the tubule instead the loop diuretics will be secreted through that particular transporter system and uric acid will remain in our body and that will result in what is called hyperuricemia and that is the reason why it is contraindicated in patients with gouty arthritis all right next the other important adverse effect is these drugs they will cause dyslipidemia right these drugs they will cause dyslipidemia so these are some of the electrolyte abnormalities and always remember the loop diuretics will lose the calcium loop diuretics will lose the calcium and loop diuretics they will cause hypocalcemia by increasing the excretion of calcium whereas thiazide diuretics they cause hypercalcemia by decreasing its excretion now let me tell you some of the important adverse effects of the individual drugs now we have what is called ethacrylic acid this particular ethacrylic acid it can cause ototoxicity more compared to that of the other loop diuretics all right so ethacrylic acid it is responsible for ototoxicity right it is responsible for ototoxicity whereas you take the other drugs that is furosemide and bumetanide right furosemide and as well as bumetanide these are basically sulfonamides in chemical structure so because these are sulfonamides in chemical structure these drugs right these drugs should be avoided in persons allergic to sulfonamides all right so furosemide and bumetanide they are sulfonamide in chemical structure so they should be avoided in persons whoever are allergic to this particular sulfonamides